and trees whiz past us as we hurtle down the road. I give a quick glance in Lilia's direction. Wear your seatbelt. Her eyes are closed straight ahead and she's trembling. Are you okay? She jumps a little in her seat, still avoiding my case, looking like a frightened her rabbit. Her mouth opens and closes, as if trying to form words. Uh, who are you? Who are those people? What's going on? Her voice comes out high-pitched. You killed that guy? Where are you taking me? Lillian, calm down for a moment. Listen to me. I take a deep breath. There is no helping it now. I need to tell her something. Lillian, those guys were probably trying to kidnap you. To use you as leverage against your father. She's now looking at me in shock. You know your father has been working on a big case lately, right? She gives a short nod. Did he tell you any of the details? He just said that he was working on something big. That, that he'd be away in a lot. Hmm. Okay, let's stop somewhere for a bit. Do you want a coffee? I guess. All right. Here you go. I hand her a cup of coffee. Thanks. She looks like she's doing a little better now. I kept an eye on her from a cafe, thinking she would try to run, but super singly she stayed bad. Lillian, your father hired me for your protection. He's working on a very sensitive case right now. The prosecution of a dangerous drug lord. He wanted me to keep an eye on you while you were at college. He was afraid they might try something out of desperation and apparently his fears were f well founded. She sips her coffee thoughtfully. So you were like, what, a bodyguard? Ah, uh, something like that, yeah? My dad set you up to this? To look out for me? Yeah, he was worried. Where is he? I, I want to see him. Okay, I'll take you back home in a bit. I don't know how things are right now. A lot happened in a short amount of time. I need to get a handle on the situation before I return you to your home. But I'll hold up a finger. Here's what we're going to do. I'll take you to my flat, then phone your father to tell him what happened and that you're with me. Safe. Then, I scope out the surroundings, try to see if we're being followed, and then after that, I'll take you back home. Lillian doesn't look pleased with this arrangement. Look, I know you want to go home and see your father right now, but this is for the best. It's the safest option we have. Fine. Okay, good. Let's get move on now. We entered the flat, Lillian having apparently settled down by this time. Here we are. Make yourself at home, uh, kitchens are here and... Where's the bathroom? Oh, second door on the right. Right. She starts off in that direction. Hey, shoes! Take them off, place them in that shelf over there. Lillian groans, rolling her eyes, but still trudges towards the entryway. This girl... Well, this might just be the aftershocks. The whole experience must have been very traumatizing for her. It's not the time for, it's not the time for me to mollish about these things. I'll call your father now to fill him in. Your home is... yeah? Kinda small. I thought it'd be more fancy, you know, with the kind of work you do. Well, so much for that conjecture. Anyway, 
Lillian is in the bathroom right now. I should scope out the surroundings. She could still be in danger. But is it okay to just leave her here like this? Maybe I should wait till she comes out. She could need something. Or she might get frightened when she says I'm not here. We're saving once again. And I personally think we should wait. Lillian took about a half hour in a bath. She's now sitting on the bed, looking worried. Are you okay on your own for a while? I need to check if we were followed. Yeah, I'll be alright. I'll just be over here till you get back. Okay. You can use anything that you need. I'll be back in about 20 minutes. She gives me a look before lowering her gaze again. Mm, well, I guess she'll be fine. I should head out now. I took a few rounds, a few rounds around the neighborhood. It didn't seem like anyone was tailing us, so now I'm on my way to Lillian's to drop her off. Ever since the shock wore off, Lillian has been a little. So what did my dad say? Um. Hmm. Oh, he was very upset. He wanted to see you immediately. Lillian looks a little pleased. He feels this incident will bring the case to a quick conclusion. Say, I never really asked you, what's your name? She asked me with curiosity. Ina. Crap, I gave her my real name. Oh yeah, crap. Ina. Hmm? Oh, nothing. It's a nice name. Are you a foreigner? Foreigner? No, why? I uh, your name sounds um Welsh? I let out a burst of laughter. <laughs> no, I'm not Welsh, William. She seems even more engrossed in me than before. You have a nice laugh. Huh? Oh um Thanks. Okay, now this is getting strangely uncomfortable. Um, Ina? Oh, now what is it? Yes? Where did you learn to shoot like that? You like took down the guy from a mile away. It wasn't a mile away. I can't help but be amused by hearing her take on things. At any rate, it's just part of a job, basic training in the firearms. Oh, and here we are now. I don't even care about trying to mask the relief in my voice at this point. We've reached William's uh, mansion. I parked my car across the street. Oh, I think she's disappointed. Garland is waiting by the gate, talking on phone. He's a pressure a mixture of anxiety and excitement. Lillian jumps out of a car and her father spots her at the same time. Dad! He rushes over to her and wraps her in a tight hug. Lillian, are you right? Are you hurt anywhere? Well, there you have it. It was a long, hectic day, but I suppose this could be a constant a satisfactory resolution to it. The opposition acted rashly and more importantly, the attack on Lillian was a failure. Now they will be made to face the consequences. Garland's victory seems imminent at this point. I can only hope things go peacefully from now on. If there is anything this car has learned from today's incident, then that be too... Hmm? Lillian's inside the car again. Her father is off in a distance, talking on the phone. Lillian? Oh, my dad is busy. I wanted to talk with you some more. Oh, alright then. Uh, you and your dad seem pretty close. Mm, oh yeah, we get along really well. Mm. I stretch and turn my attention back towards the street. I guess she's sort of daddy's little girl. He probably spoils her. 
But that's on their Sunday, Blake is. If it's the need to fill the shoes of two parents. Well, lucky her. Presently, I'm becoming keenly aware of an intense stir coming from my right. Sure enough, Lillian is standing my face intently. What is it? Were you thinking about something? Uh, oh. I give a short laugh. No, I'm just not used to having inquisitive and sleepy people around me, so... I seem to have made a habit of brooding. What sort of people are you used to having around you? This girl, I can just hear the eagerness in her voice. Oh, um, I don't know, maybe the kind of that, of that, don't, what? Maybe the kind of that don't ask many questions. I was hard to say. I laugh again. Oh, oh don't make such a sad face, Lillian. Lillian's expression tells me she hadn't even noticed her known enthusiasm. She looks down, visibly embarrassed by her probing. Sorry, sometimes I get carried away. It's alright. Ina, she hesitates for a moment. Thanks. Oh. Um, don't worry about it. It's hard to make eye contact now for some reason. Okay, bye then. Lillian dashes out of a car, makes a beeline for home, and disappears behind the front door. I stare after her for a few moments. My thoughts are in a jumble right now. I need to go home and start myself out. Carl is still on the phone, talking excitedly and waving his arms about. Hmm. Lillian nearly got taken today. If things went even slightly differently, who knows where she would be right now? But then again, this is exactly why I was hired. My job requires me to prevent anything from happening to her, and that was exactly what I did. While looking at Carol right now stirs an emotion in me. Oh my god, that's the hardest choice ever because I don't it's about it's that he didn't act exactly uh, honestly worried. I mean, he was worried, but he was kind of more excited how the whole fact will, what kind of an effect it will have on a case. And I pro probably, I shouldn't get involved, but I, I want to have a word with him. Yeah, this isn't fair to Lillian. I step out of a car and make my way towards Garland. And mis Mr. Garland. A word, if you may. He covered his phone speaker and turns to me. Lena. I need a quick word, do you have time? Oh, oh, sure. After a quick I'll call you back, he turns his full attention towards me, beaming in his customary fashion. Now, what is it, Ina? Well, I, uh... I paused, realizing I had thought what I was going to say to him. It's about Lillian, Mr. Garland. Lillian? Yes, you know, she came very close to being kidnapped today. If... If I had done one thing differently, if I had been just a little late, God knows where she would be right now. I'm a little surprised by the emotion in my voice. I realize I'm not making a very solid point. Garland was aware of a risk, and that's exactly why I was hired. I can only hope to appeal to the father inside of him, although that might result in me losing this job. But then again, isn't that what I'm trying to do here? Karan looks troubled. Well, yes, I know, and I'm immeasurably grateful to you. You did a brilliant job. That wasn't my point. We're talking about Lillian's life here. It was this case. It was your job that put her through this. I, I know it's not my place to tell you these things. I'm overstimming my bones here, but I find myself concerned. The risks we're dealing with here are just too great. Oh, that's what I, I actually thought she would talk about something else, but 
well. I'm worried about William. The words escaped my lips before I even had a chance to think them through. Feeling a little awkward, I look away. Garon looks a little taken aback. Oh, I'm happy that you're concerned for Lillian, of course, but what do you propose I do? Now, don't get me wrong, I'm very worried about Lillian too. I no never wanted anything of this sort to happen, but... In this case, I can't very well chop it, you know? I'm putting a dangerous man behind bars. I understood the risk from the start, but I still felt it was the right thing to do. It was necessary. Don't you worry, Ina. They got themselves in a row bind now. The case should be concluded in no time. The scoutrels aren't going to try anything to stop it again. I simply stare at Garland. He seems almost like a man possessed, delusional. Mr. Garland, listen to me. Those men, they don't forget. They never forget. They will never stop coming at you until you both are dead. They have a principle, a code, and they place that above everything else. I can assure you, your daughter is not any more safe now than she was yesterday. It's the opposite, in fact. I am a have exaggerated things, Otto. It was necessary to get through to someone like him, but she was actually really right because there are so many stories of people that are either detectives or lawyers with criminal cases or people like that that get just attacked or kidnapped or their family is being hurt by the people that either escape or got out of the prison somehow or their families. So yeah, she's being honest. Garon doesn't look as confident now, he's a little shaken even. At any rate, that's all I wanted to say, Mr. Garland. Excuse my meddling. I'm happy for it with my choice, actually. I think that she really got kind of um, likeness to Lillian and she should have act like I did. There's not much more that I can say right now. I may have already gone too far. I started to turn around when... Uh, Ina. I, uh, I'll think things through again. I may have been a bit rash with all this. I think I scared him. Good. I'm all over it. Consider all the options in our current situation. This case... It really might not be the best things for us, me and Lillian. And thank you for your earnest words. I nod, turn my back to him and make my way to the car.